This circus tiger was abandoned in a cage, and while she was there, she suffered all sorts of infections. Anyone who saw the tiger presumed that she had only a few days left to live. Luckily, a rescuer named Vicky found her and decided to save her, but was it too late already? Would the tiger survive? Growing up, Vicky had always loved animals. She impulsively cared for them and felt a strong urge to help them because they are unable to easily help themselves. Vicky's underlying love for animals all began when she rescued a sick stray dog that came to their front yard, probably asking to be adopted. The poor animal looked scraggly and hungry, and his whole body was covered with sores. Picking up the animal, Vicky, who was only eight at the time, told him that she would nurse him back to health. However, when she took him inside, her parents screamed at her to take the sick dog out of the house, but she refused. She was hell-bent on helping the poor animal. Giving in to the little girl's desire, Vicky's parents took the dog to a vet who treated him, but sadly, the dog didn't make it, and he passed away a few days later. Ever since then, Vicky did her best to help any animal in need. So, it didn't come as a surprise to her parents when Vicky, then 28, founded InSync Exotic Wildlife Rescue and Educational Center. While working with this foundation, Vicky learned about the abandoned circus tiger two years after starting the foundation. Vicky and her team were told about the circus tiger Asia, and they decided to bring her to the rescue center so that they could adequately care for her. When they went to pick up the tiger, they couldn't believe their eyes. She looked nothing like a nine-month-old tiger, she was so tiny and scraggly that she could pass for a two-month-old tiger. Asia was part of a traveling circus that put on various entertainment shows, including acrobats, trained animals, trapeze acts, musicians, dancers, and magicians. Their animals were trained to entertain the audience, and tigers like Asia were taught to perform uncomfortable and unnatural tricks, such as jumping through fire. Life on the road meant that most of Asia's life was spent in a circus wagon, in the back of a semi-truck, or a crowded, stinking boxcar on a train or barge. This circus deprived her of opportunities to fulfill basic needs such as roaming or playing around. Moreover, in a bid to entertain their guests, the circus used unprintable tactics to coerce Asia to perform on cue. So, what may seem like a willing participant to the audience is, in reality, nothing more than a terrified animal that has been beaten into submission and forced to perform. Sadly, while these performers made money off Asia, they didn't care about her well-being and physical wellness. So, you can imagine what this tiger went through. To make matters worse, she was placed in a cage with a much bigger tiger who constantly picked on her. As soon as I saw Asia, my heart broke into a million pieces, Vicky said. She was nine months old, but she looked like she was only two months old. We did an investigation, and we found out that the animals at the circus weren't receiving proper care. But something, in particular, was wrong with Asia, although it was uncertain what. Vicky continued, apart from looking skinny, Asia was also in a terrible state. She had open wounds on her skin, which were bite marks from the larger tiger she lived with. There were also spots all over her entire body, and her skin was cracking and bleeding. Wasting no time, Vicky took Asia to the veterinarian, who confirmed that the poor animal had ringworms. She was given proper treatment, and afterward, Vicky took her to an isolated enclosure at her foundation. Vicky was often busy, so her staff was in charge of taking care of most of the rescued animals. But Vicky knew that if Asia were to make it, then she would have to step in and take care of the animal by herself. So, she cancelled all her plans just so she could have time to be with Asia. The circus tiger reminded Vicky of the stray dog that she rescued when she was eight, but this time around, she was determined not to lose the rescued animal as she did some years ago. Each day, Vicky would go to Asia's enclosure and give her medications. Asia was very reluctant to take her drugs, but Vicky was understanding and patient with her. Before giving her the medication, Vicky would spend time with Asia just so she could be comfortable around her. After taking the medication, Vicky would also sit with the tiger in her enclosure and tell her all sorts of things, hoping that she would earn the animal's trust. As part of her treatment, Asia was required to take medicated baths daily. 
Sadly, the poor animal wasn't thrilled about it, and whenever it was time to have her medicated baths, Vicky had to chase after her. Although it was a bit trying to chase her around, I knew that she was going through a lot. It was devastating to see her run around in pain. I really just hoped that it would be worth it in the end, Vicky said. As each day passed, Asia didn't seem to be responding to the treatment. At some point, the vet suggested putting her down, but Vicky refused. Every other person began to give up on the tiger, but she remained hopeful. Even though others didn't see it, I could tell that deep down, Asia was fighting for her life. She wanted to live, Vicky said. As time passed, Vicky earned Asia's trust, and she began to show more willingness to take her medication. It was as if she could tell that Vicky was trying to help her get better, and somehow, she decided not to let the young woman's efforts go to waste. Soon enough, Vicky and Asia became quite close, and they eventually created an unbreakable bond. In fact, whenever Vicky was gone for too long, Asia would start roaring. Vicky, who already knew that the sound meant that the animal wanted her presence, would run to her. I am here, sweet girl. I'm here for you, Vicky would say, patting Asia gently. As time passed, Asia slowly began to recover. She became quite playful, and little by little, bits of fuzz started growing back on her skin. After almost three months of treatment, Asia began to add the much-needed weight. But that's not all, when her treatment period was almost over, Asia, who once hated to shower, now loved the water so much that Vicky even had to put a small tub in her enclosure for her to splash in. After Asia put on weight, Vicky could no longer sit with her in her enclosure. However, they still spent a lot of time together. Vicky would still enter Asia's enclosure through games like giving her a good soaking with a hose. Finally, after eight months, Asia made a remarkable recovery. She no longer had ringworms on her skin, her skin was smooth and clean, and her fur had also grown back. She looked like a real tiger. Vicky was thrilled with the results. Don't you just love the way she looks, she asked. Indeed, the world needs more people like Vicky, who give their resources, time, and love to animals who can't help themselves. But Vicky wasn't done with her mission yet, she didn't want to be Asia's only friend. She also wanted her to have other friends, especially her own kind. So, Vicky loaded Asia up and placed her next to Smuggler, a male tiger in the rescue center. And guess what? He went crazy for her, even though Smuggler was three times Asia's size. Vicky sensed that there was some sort of attraction between them and believed that Asia would be able to handle herself with a male tiger. The tigers got to know each other better through supervised playdates, and they were eventually moved into the same enclosure. Asia spends most of her day playing with Smuggler, and Vicky said, we can tell that she is happy. She is now having the time of her life. What an inspiring story. It just goes to show that no matter our trials and struggles, we can come out of them even better and stronger. The Australian wildfires that have lasted for several months since the summer solstice in 2019 have affected the hearts of people all over the world. Large tracts of woodland and houses were burned, and hundreds of millions of animals died. Among them, the Australian national treasure animal, koala, is also doomed. The koala rescued by the rescuers from the wildfire was sent to a professional institution for treatment, and was taken care of by many kind-hearted people one after another. After the fire, the koala recovered and was sent back to the forest. Unexpectedly, the koala to make such a heartwarming return to the rescuers who helped it. Wildfires are part of Australia's natural ecology. Due to its special geographical location and vegetation, this continent has become a global wildfire-prone area. Eucalyptus with a coverage rate of up to 77% is not only the main tree species, but also the only food source for koalas. Because the leaves are rich in oil, they are not only flammable in the air, but also difficult to extinguish. For hundreds of millions of years, humans, animals, plants and wildfires have coexisted and coexisted. Many native plants can regenerate within three months after the fire is extinguished, and have even evolved the characteristics of needing high temperature to sow naturally. Cities, 
towns and tourist destinations are far away from the fire path. Every year before the bushfire season, Australians who own holiday homes in the mountains will set up fire belts. After the wildfires, visiting the recovered forests, collecting new plant samples, and witnessing the power of nature to heal itself is also one of the local outdoor pleasures. However, due to climate issues such as global warming, Australia's summers are becoming drier and windier, and the potential for large-scale wildfires is becoming more and more prominent. According to statistics from the World Wildlife Fund and Nature Australia, there are about 60,000 koalas, because of the extreme large-scale wildfires in Australia from 2019 to 2020, they lost their lives, injured or lost food and habitat. Prior to this, the number of koalas in Australia has been decreasing year by year. The wildfires in Australia have been burning since September 2019. The raging fires covered the entire forest, and the smoke billowed into the sky. Rescuers who got news of the wildfires rushed to the scene without stopping for a moment, and the story of Koala Frankie and the rescuers is the most unforgettable. That day, when the rescuers who received the news rushed to the scene, the smoke was so thick that they could not see the road in the forest clearly, and the rescuers could only move forward by groping. Suddenly, the rescuers heard a faint call from a koala nearby. They searched for the sound, and soon found the koala that was making the call. His eyes were full of helplessness, and the hair on his body was burned off in many places. The rescuers gently carried the koala down from the tree, and quickly wrapped the koala in a felt blanket prepared in advance. The little koala could feel that he was being rescued, and quietly cooperated with the rescue. The rescuers quickly took out the water for koalas. The koala's limbs were burned to varying degrees, and his body was very weak. After the rescuers bandaged the little koala, they rushed to the rescue site. The rescuers named him Frankie. The koala center in the Phillip Island Nature Park in Victoria is one of the rescue sites. In the past year, the project researchers of the park have focused on the treatment and living conditions of the surviving koalas, and conducted in-depth research on the protection of ecological resources and the impact of ecotourism projects. And guide tourists' environmental awareness and actions. Since New Year's Day in 2020, the Koala Conservation Centre in Australia's Phillip Island Nature Park has received 12 koalas that were severely traumatised by the wildfires in Victoria. Prior to this, the Protection Centre mainly received koalas that were sick or injured by other animals. Frankie, who had just been sent to the rescue station, was like a shivering black charcoal. His beady eyes observed everything around him curiously. His helpless and frightened eyes made the rescuers feel sad. He is a typical big head in southern Australia. A light brown koala, which originally had thick and long hair, only the outline of two burnt ears remained. In addition to the fright and hunger when fleeing the wildfire, it also suffered from a certain degree of post-traumatic stress disorder, loss of appetite and fear of climbing trees. After four months on Phillip Island, he has grown short white and grey fur on his head, has regained his fuzzy grey ears, and has a white collar around his neck, the conservation centre and experts from the Victoria State Zoo also helped it exercise the muscle strength of its limbs, repair its palms and feet, and restore its original hardness and length to its claws so that they can firmly grasp the tree trunk. When the thickness of its hair can resist the cold in autumn and winter, it will return to the real, koala, life. With the assistance of WWF, special guardrails for koala reconstruction have been set up in the protection center, which simulates the wild living environment. For example, different eucalyptus canopy heights, branch thickness, bark roughness and so on. Under such semi-natural conditions, help them carry out phased recovery training until their physical and mental health can fully reach the state of returning to the wild. When it saw Frankie, it still looked extraordinarily weak and shy, and its eyes were not as calm or sleepy as those of its unworldly counterparts. Now it can stay on a lower tree trunk to eat by itself, and it is very close to the staff. Before returning to nature, Frankie has to cultivate and cultivate masculinity, although koalas are not very territorial animals. For example, they will take turns to share the same eucalyptus. 
But during the spring and summer breeding season, the young and timid male koalas will be driven away by stronger competitors in turn. The staff will also share the daily rescue of Koala Frankie on the official social media, which has attracted many koala fans' concern and praise. Under the careful care of the staff, Frankie's body has gradually recovered, and the burnt hair has gradually grown back to the point where he can keep out the cold, and he can shuttle between the trees for food and play. After the wildfires were extinguished, the local area organized resident volunteers and tourists to rebuild habitats for koalas by crossing the sea by ferry. Although affected by the plague, the scale of this activity had to be temporarily reduced, and the pace also slowed down. By May 2021, volunteers have planted approximately 1,500 native tree species on the island. In July 2021, the koala's hometown has regained its greenery and vitality. The rescuers plan to release Frankie and other koalas back to nature, because that is where he belongs. For their whereabouts and various physical conditions, the staff installed trackers on the koalas, and judged their rhythm of life through satellites and whether they were in danger. A key part of returning to nature is whether koalas can find a suitable resident territory and settle down. This process requires some character development, said Dan, a senior animal protection expert. After three months, these trackers will be removed, allowing the koalas to leave the site of humans and live their wild life. On the day Frankie was sent back to nature, the rescuers hugged Frankie reluctantly, Frankie also hugged the rescuers tightly, and refused to let go for a long time. During the rescue period, they have been together day and night, and they have established a deep relationship. Koala Frankie also took the initiative to hug the rescuers. The smile on his face seemed to express his gratitude to the rescuers. The rescuers were moved by Koala's behavior move. When wildfires continued to spread and destroy human homes and animal habitats, humans did not give up on those animals in dire straits, but did their best to rescue them. Even though they are dying animals, human beings never give up, all of which reflect human beings' love for wild animals, and further express human beings' desire to live in harmony with nature.